Welcome to our in-studio DSTV roundtable. Um, I mean, there's no actual roundtable. Uh, DSTV round carpets, if you will, where we've managed to get together um, some of the most loved, some of the biggest uh, DSTV talent with us here for a powwow, a chat, imbizo. It might even get to that at some point. Uh, just to spend some quality time, you know? find out what's been happening, how things are going, and speak about the wonderful content that DSTV has to offer. I'm gonna head over to you, Didi, because I can see you're very excited that you're actually sitting like this. I'm so You're keen. sitting like this, waiting. Okay, yeah. ask me yeah. first. <laughs> like, you yeah. managed to get all of the earrings in the whole of Joburg <laughs> on your head. Nobody I can find the earrings right now. Them <laughs> together. Yeah. Oh. I'm trying to punk it out. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna ask, I'm gonna throw this question to you, but I think this is a question to everybody. First of all, how is everybody doing? Uh, what, is, what has it been like for you in the last couple of months? And what's happening? Let's start with you. I guess it's been very cool. <laughs> um, shooting in COVID has definitely taught me to flex and come out of my comfort zone as an actor. So doing intimate scenes, for example, just mm. isn't the same. <laughs> and having to find uh, very creative and different ways of performing yeah. with your co-actor, yeah. find creative but different were you ways to make... With actors or was it this uh, Zoom business? <laughs> yeah! yeah. Oh. <laughs> you sounded so annoyed already. <laughs> oh. These computers. Yeah, I kind of liked the Zoom interactions because it sort of forces us to, yeah, think out of the box in terms yeah. of how we perform. Interesting. Awesome. Awesome. How are things yeah. for you, brother? How are you, first of all? Because you're always chilled. But also happy to get this contract with the show. And then I read the script where they're saying that, yeah, for the first time I was going to have an intimate scene yes, in babe. my life. Yes, I was going to learn something. And then, two, COVID. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Long action for you. Hey. I'm, so, no, no, no. I'm, uh, I was looking at it as um, experience, you know? Mm. Like uh, having those scenes as an actor, you know. Mm. Yeah. And also, when I looked at it, it was going to help me. You know, there's hard times we're living in, yeah. GPV stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It was going to also help me to respect, you know, yeah. my core actors, oh, my you, actresses, you. you know. Yeah. I wanted that, you know, that learning thing of yeah. saying that, okay, this is how I respect, you know, the whole thing, okay, the kids we do it. Like, I wanted that experience. Yeah, we even had so an intimacy now this, coach. Yeah. yeah. You had an intimacy wow. coach. Wow. Yeah. How, how exactly does that work? I just, I, I so basically the intimacy <laughs> coach comes in okay. and you just kind of get to learn how to conduct yourself on a set well, you with the intimacy intimate. coach there, you know, check what is safe, you know, for yeah. you to touch mm -hmm. another yeah. actor. Okay. And right. That's so responsible though, and I have such respect because there have been so many stories about women, more especially, and mm -hmm. I'm sure men too, yeah. but yeah. obviously yeah. at the forefront of the conversation yeah. at the moment is women being violated, but it's done in such a uh, underhanded yeah. way. Yes. So like you'll maximize on when there's an intimate scene, and you'll capitalize on yes. that and go all in. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the woman then feels like, oh, I don't think your hand should have been there, but you're also confused and conflicted because you're like, oh, but maybe that was part of the scene. So yeah. I mm. really respect mm -hmm. that they mm. took responsibility mm. well and actually formalized, that's, that's these good. are your boundaries, this is what yes. you can and can't do. Mm. Yeah. And if someone crosses the line, mm. then they'll have to answer for that. Yes. I think that mm. is so responsible mm. because as artists, generally, we just like, be let out to the wolves and it's like well now fend for yourself you know mm, sometimes and as actors we go deep into something and yeah. then you want to prove yourself so bad yes. to the yes. audience yes. that you forget that uh after the show ends you're going to be scarred i do wish i had that though because there's there's um my character is in the closet he's hiding in the shadow of his dad and he's very scared of what people will think of him because image is everything right so now it was like i know like when i got the script i was like okay cool i know that i am in the closet 
fine. But I didn't know that I'm going to actually have intimate scenes right. mm. with my, my, my boyfriend or lover or whatever. And it's just like, oh. I really wish I was prepared for this. Mm -hmm. This was yeah. a lot. Yes. And I had major anxiety because it wasn't right. just about me being a heterosexual male kissing a guy. Yeah. It's about everything that is attached to me after the show. Yeah. yeah. The mm -hmm. fact that I'm a Tosa yeah. man from PE, Eastern Cape. <laughs> you saw what they did with Inleb. Exactly. Yeah. They completely destroyed it. And yeah. you can only imagine now all the backlash is coming to yeah. me yeah. and me alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I have to go home and face all of these people who are now going to say the most homophobic things to me and forget separate. that I'm a character mm. in that moment. I am not that guy, yeah. you know? And it, it started making me realize that if I am having such a hard time playing a role, I can only imagine a person living in those shoes yeah. every day of their life, trying so hard to come out, but realizing the backlash that it will get, mm. not knowing if your mom or dad will love you after you tell them the truth. Mm. And it really made me respect the LGBTQ community so much more because now I know how hard it is to live that life and really want to come out, but nobody accepts you for who you are. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Our brother. Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing about intimacy, about COVID, is that it doesn't have to be an intimate scene in, in a sexual manner for us to be intimate. I feel what we've lost as actors is like, for whenever I see Lorsha, I just want to like jump on her and just like oh, for love for oh. hours. And, and as did. actors, I th there's so much love nice. and, and yeah. you yeah. share so much and you go through so much mm. together. It yeah. is intimate. Conversations right. are intimate. And it, the separation of like being worried about touching or being worried about yeah. what you might give someone to take home to their family. Yeah. It's, it's, it's put a dampener on things mm. because what we do as actors is we share. Mm. We work with our hearts and we share stories mm. and emotions. Losha, I want to know from you, um, how have you been? Speak to me about this year thus far. That's such a... Go on, dear. <laughs> Go on, dear. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, listening, I, you know what I love about being in, in creative spaces? Like, yeah. even if we're just talking about mm. any subject matter, there's just so much heart mm. that I think with this conversation could have happened anywhere. Of course. And, yeah. and it's about, you know, we're honest like this because in our craft, it requires us to be honest, right? Mm. So in, in it, for the sake of honesty, I loved lockdown. If I had millions, I would stay in lockdown because I quite enjoy my time. I quite yeah. enjoyed not having to, to run. I'm okay with my carbon footprint in this life being less is more. I'm actually okay with that. I'm okay with not having to have all the external bravado that goes with looking successful. My level of success now for me is based on do I really like myself? Do I like what I sound like? Do I like what I feel like? Am I aligned? Yes. Am I, Am I allowed to ask a question? Of course you can ask a question, okay. yeah. Actually, my question's for you. Oh. During COVID and yes. this whole pandemic and, and the lockdown, yes. how difficult has it been for you as a comedian to be able to do shows? I can tell you, because I stalk him. Oh, wow, okay. No, I Straight can. off the I bat, you just... Him? Okay, let me tell All you right. something. I'd... Listen. While all of us were baking banana bread, he was making videos with his fiance and killing it, wow. coining it. Oh, yeah. Brands were I calling him more. saying, wow. can you do this video? Can you put it out? They were making money. Sure and his it. fiance plays the violin. Oh, you must see the yes. thing they did on the Missy I thing. Love their I wish, why didn't you call me for that? Cause you know, I was very upset. Why? I, I was so upset. I was like, one, they colored. They could have included me. <laughs> <laughs> two, two, I'm sure they needed a real dancer because they are not. Ah. Right? Wow. No, 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 no. Three, Missy Elliott reposted their video. <gasps> it was she my did. one opportunity to actually oh, have Missy go. There's a colored girl that exists oh, yeah. in yeah, South yeah. Africa. Yeah. And, I need to and so you, you didn't include better. me because so I sorry. love Missy. A whole mystery. No, that was a that was a very big deal. I was shocked. I was saying to somebody earlier on that I thought it was just a spam account that reposted it. Then when I went in, I was like, ah! <laughs> you were like, wait, ooh, yeah. let me go back out and refresh. But, but I think I echo I echo Lorsha in that um, mm. I kind of 
so I knew that I wouldn't be on stage for a very long time, yeah. you know, and like I'm a creative at heart, mm. so I'm always making stuff, you know. Oh, okay. I, I can do comedy as well. That's one of the things I can do. Yeah. So when that was taken away, I kind of resorted to just making other stuff mm. because I could never sit and do nothing. That's just not my <laughs> so nature, not in my it, nature. You, I want to throw it over here to, to, to Mr. Whitehead. I must say, I echo that I enjoyed the lockdown. I, um, I didn't mind not having to go anywhere. Mm. And I didn't mind not having to see anybody, mm. particularly. I missed people, um, as one does. But I like the quiet mm. and the, mm. the kind of weirdness of it. Mm. It was weird, and I didn't know what day it was. After a while, <laughs> you don't. You all did it. Yeah. I'm very unlike you. I'm quite happy um, to do nothing. Nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> I kind of enjoyed that. And I do think there are a lot of things that we do now that is that. going to be part of our new normal, or yes. should be. The Queen of Gagnet. The Ooh. Queen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Queen yeah. of Gagnet. Yeah. 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 No, no, take it, take it. <laughs> Even the way she said bye, dog, bye, dog. Just a bit of bass in that. Kijk net het my geleer dat jy praat altyd in jou laregister. In jou laregister. Laregister van onderaf. Jy praat nie, nie. Jy praat nie. Nie. <laughs> I heard a lot of sounds, I heard nothing after that. Jumma, jumma, jumma. No. That was it. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Jumma, jumma, jumma. She said something. You said something. But also, that. just to add to the loving staying home, yeah. my kids loved the fact that yeah. I didn't have to go anywhere. Yeah. They, yeah. Um, they were obsessed with waking up and finding me there. Yeah, it's weird how we, we, we got to appreciate the the simple things, the basic, basic, basic things that we should be doing naturally. Mr. Maklaki, 2002. Are you from Maklaki or Zwede? Zwede. Oh, Zwede. Yeah. Like, oh, Latuma, eh? Latuma is also from Zwede. Uh, the Siakulisi as well. Siakulisi. Yeah. Oh, is, hence the oh, whole, okay. Oh, oh, oh had my you. goodness. The name dropper. Oh, <laughs> I mean, uh, you that, should know that, yeah. That's <laughs> true, yeah. You should, uh, oh, 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 oh. Come from a dope oh, place. Just oh, throw oh, it out. Come from a dope oh. place. <laughs> now, what was it like for you, brother? During lockdown, I was actually home, and mm, yes. It was it was it was a beautiful experience because um, mm. my family was there, my friends accepted me with loving and open arms, and it was great to be able to teach them that Johannesburg is not what you think it is. My industry is not what you think it is. Mm. This is how it is. As, as much as it looks like it's fun when we're on set and we're doing what we do, but I'm like, listen, it is work. Yeah. To us, it is work. Twelve hours on set is no joke. Mm. I'm sure there was somebody there, uh, Kokasi, that said, yeah. look at him now. He doesn't even wear his chain around his neck anymore. Just, he just puts no, it here no. on the I mean, suit. Yes. 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 I mean, you see, even the pocket square. <laughs> even the, ah, you know, you don't it's a tape. You don't you know. it's, it's more respect than, than insult now because it's like, dude, we sat with you. You used to sit here. Caesar, Ikatiti, Namakot and everything and Gatsby's and all of that. And we're watching you on screen. Like, you're the guy that was here with us with nothing, and now we're watching you. And it, it, it really blows in mind that it is possible. It doesn't matter where you come from. If God put it in your way and you know that you have the talent for it, all you need is to be patient and work hard. It is an instant recipe. You're going to get where you want to go. Shall we clap, guys? I know we should clap. We should clap. Hypothetically, okay. right? Okay. I'm a, a famous director wanting to know a little bit about you, a little bit about your show, the show that you are on. Okay. Sell it to me, elevator pitch in 30 seconds. Let's go. All right. Mm. Um, Vula Vala is a South African show that tells stories for those who can't tell it themselves. It invokes a lot of emotions because everybody sees a bit of themselves in the show. It is healthy and it's also, it's also very brutal to watch because it's like, I, we didn't want to tell that story ourselves, but thank you for saying it for us. Stephanie, speak to me about your show. Sell Ooh. your show to me. You know what, my show basically sells itself, but... Uh, oh, hey. Um, hey. Oh, okay. You guys are just gunning for camps right now, that's what you're trying to do. 
so my show is called Getrout Met Rugby. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a play on footballers' wives. So it's a South African spin. We mm. are all about our rugby. And so a lot of people think, why don't they see any kicking and playing as much? Because it's more about the lives behind the scenes and the rugby players, their scandals, the schemes that some, sometimes have to happen. And we, we step on a lot of toes because they bring what is hidden to the fore mm. in, a, mm. in, a, in a dramatic way. Yeah. Um, I represent a certain type of woman and I'm grateful mm. for that. Yes, yeah. And I think that is what helps people to resonate more to me. We like, not that I'm the most loved, what I'm saying is people like looking at someone normal. Mm. It's the relatability. Yes, you want no, to relate Not everyone to has to be a model. Robert, what are you currently working on? The Christmas movie, or a Christmas movie, they made a whole series called Herb and Moon. And I play Herb, and he's the grandpa. So, um, he's our granddad, who is particularly close to his granddaughter. He's not, his relationship with his daughter is kind of ambiguous, but it's not helped because he doesn't like his um, son-in-law. I think it, it, it's quite diverting and interesting and Great. charming and South African. And it is a lovely Christmas story, actually, in the end, yeah? So I, I just finished uh, one of the Christmas movies too, called Twisted Christmas, and it's a magical kind of beautifully balanced between all the feels, heart-wrenching, teary moments, and all the laughs um, about a woman who is quintessential, rich, housewife, Constantia, all the money, very materialistic. Christmas is her big thing. She always throws a massive Christmas party. Suddenly she loses everything and her and her family have to move in with her landscaper's family in Boerkop. And now it was so <laughs> lovely kind of setting something in mm. the Boerkop, looking at like white Christian family obsessed with Christmas coming to a very mm. staid kind of Muslim home and the culture clash oh, and the comedy in that. And um, it's a fantastic cast and great people and a simple story that will make you laugh and kind of cry with the warm um, gushy feels. It's, it's cool and I mean who doesn't love a warm, gushy, mm. funny Christmas movies? I think Mnet's commissioned six Christmas movies, all different, multicultural, wow, multiracial, multi-place yeah. here, there, wow. everywhere. Different directors, different writers. And all leading up to Christmas. To Christmas. It? You have three shows on Showmax at the moment, still breathing. Housekeepers. Lockdown. Mm. Mm. That's mm. Uh, quite a thing. I mean, yes. inside of me, I'm smiling. Yes. I know, you were even oh. just saying. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, like, yes. 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 We're feeling like, yes. <laughs> yeah, that was a nice feeling. I mean, <laughs> very quickly, yeah. sum up the experience of all, because those are three very different shows. Very. Very, very different. Mm. Sum up the experience mm. in all of those, the feeling that you got out of all of them. Very, very different. I mean, lockdown was the first of its kind. You'd never seen women play the roles that they do on lockdown. You'd never seen it. Our country had mm. not experienced seeing women in that light and telling stories in that way. Still breathing for me, on the other hand, was complete opposite to that. It was real life stories as well, but just friends, family, so interlinked. And how I think the subtlety of that, so lockdown's loud, it's in your face, and then still breathing is close and it's in your heart. Like it's what you watch with like hot chocolate and lockdown is what you watch with tequila because it's so hard to swallow, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, All of yes. it. Um, and then housekeepers on the other hand, I think, the perspective from which the story is told for me was so interesting. It's told from the domestic's perspective, which is often overlooked in our society, right? So what are their experiences? What do they see? How do they get treated? What is it through their lens that we see? Um, and also, I mean, I played there, I have a character called Nkonto, he's a hitman. A hitman is usually, and a cleaner is usually male. So again, it went against the grain. Also, I played Nkonto with black name, colored woman. And what was most interesting for me about that role is that audience didn't question the fact that Nkonto 
had a black name and it was a colored woman playing her. So again, it, it transcended how we keep going in our industry. It's Tsepo, so it has to be a, a black, black man. Person. And yet we're not telling a cultural story. Exactly. We're just telling a story. Yes. That yeah. deserves a clap. That's uh, a clap. Yeah. You're, you're really connecting these claps now. You're connecting these uh, right claps yeah. now, boys. Fantastic. Moving right along. Brother Khosi. Sure. Talk I'm to just, me, sir. I'm, I'm just going to let... Um, Dean Clay, um, answer the, the, the show thingy, selling the show, because okay. I don't want to sell the <laughs> goods, okay. you know? Did he speak to us about, about the show? It's on, it's on, it's so no. Mm, she was ready it's for it, eh? No, she was ready no. for it. It's on, it's on, it's on. So basically, yeah, Isono is based on the seven deadly sins. Uh, and um, each and every single main character resembles a duality that is a reflection of that sin. But then there's another part of them that really tries to overcome and become a better version of themselves, but they struggle with this aspect of themselves that, you know, th that is there because of Mother Mary. So yeah, that's, it's, a, it's a gritty show, um, and it's, the purpose is we try to push the boundaries and we try to go against the grain and we try to we try to do things a little bit outside of you know what BET has done before has produced before so it's beautiful what you just said mm -hmm. because ultimately like if I had to li listening to what you just said it's like mother mary is the devil she yeah. brings out the sin side of it's you and then life really is what we would say god yes. right and it's a, and as humans we do we we fight we with that duality, duality all the, the time. time because nothing exists without its opposite yes. so if you can be good you can be bad if you yes. can be light you can be dark right yes. so it's, i love you see south african writers mm. like salute mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Oh, absolutely wow. fantastic. <laughs> it's for both of you guys. Yeah, yeah. Both of you collective. Guys. That was a collective one. Yes, because he made the choice to let us speak yes. about it. Right. Yes, yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> this was absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed getting to know all of you. I'm sure uh, you feel the same way. Thank you to everybody who watched this uh, DSTV Roundtable. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more episodes. We encourage that you do. Um, and let us know in the comments who else you want to see featured here on the Roundtable. Uh, you can also watch every single one of these amazing shows on DSTV or on the DSTV app. In fact, there's a link right here in the description um, for you to download the app. But uh, yeah, once again, thank you very much and thank you to you guys. Boom, we're out. That's how you do an outro.